Hi, I'm Matt from Motorsport Electronics, and in this video, we're going to take a deep dive at the injection driver on the ME platform. So starting from the top, we have our fueling mode. Now, typically when first configuring an ECU, you're doing lots of cranking of the engine and so on, you don't want to be arbitrarily spraying fuel into the engine. So you can turn the fueling mode to off. Be sure to cycle the key, by the way, when changing any of these settings as they are cycle critical to take effect, as you can see by the power cycle indicator at the bottom of the screen. The other modes you have are batch, grouped and fully sequential. Batch will fire all of your injector channels together once every 360 degrees. Grouped will fire them alternatingly every 180 degrees and fully sequential if you have fully full synchronization, i.e. you are utilizing a cam pattern, will fire them every 180 degrees in order on this particular four cylinder engine, making a total of 720 degrees for the full four cylinder engine cycle. One thing to note is if you are using fully sequential and you have cam sync after RPM in use, it will start in batch and then switch over to fully sequential once a full 720 sync has been obtained. Use IAT and algorithm. Now, the ECU itself has the uh, model gas laws built into it, and if we say yes to this, it will use IAT and automatically compensate for the density of the air entering the engine based on that, based on a default of 22. If we set this to no, then it will only use the trim. And if I head over here to IAT and bring up the IAT trim table, sorry, the injection IAT trim, then I can see that at minus 20, I put in approximately 11% more fuel, and at 80 degrees IAT temperature, I take out about 3.5% fuel. Bear in mind, this trim table also takes effect even if you have the IAT trim in use, but it is used specifically if it's turned off. So without, if you have the IAT trim turned off, you have to use that trim table. And you can see the baseline when you have it turned off is set to 22 degrees. That means there is no trim applied at 22. The injection angle specifier determines when we are timing our ignition angle. Are we saying, let's make sure our injection is done by the angle we specified as an end of pulse, or are we saying start the injection happening at the start of pulse? That's what this does. And if we bring up our injection angle, which I will need to locate, injection angle here. We can set our injection angle in degrees, in crankshaft degrees, based on RPM. Next up is the injector max duty. Now, typically when tuning an engine, you should only really aim to ever use about 90% of your injections capability. However, uh, we have a default here of 99, and what this means is if the injectors hit 99% of duty, the engine will hard cut, letting you as a tuner know that you are maxing out your injectors. You will also see this indicator here light to tell you that injected max duty has occurred. In that case, you're looking at bigger fuel injectors or more fuel pressure to make sure that you get enough fuel into the engine to meet the AFR that you're trying to obtain. Next up, we have our primary injector size in cc's a minute, and this is essentially the flow rate of the injectors at the reference pressure. So typically an injector's data sheet will say it's a 220 cc's a minute at 350 kPa of fuel pressure or 3.5 bar of fuel of test pressure. And we can change this number again, much like in the engine driver, we can use it as a coarse trim for fueling. If I fit bigger injectors and type in the bigger number, it will roughly run okay. It won't be perfect, but it'll be close enough as a basic trim. And for example, if I wanted to make my engine run slightly richer, what I can do is make this number smaller, tricking the ECU into thinking I've fitted smaller injectors when I haven't actually changed anything. So it's a very good way of doing a sort of coarse trim. If your injector flow rate has been specified, for example, at 3.5 bar, but our fuel rail is at 4 bar, we can type in 4 bar in here, and that will compensate and, and affect as a multiplier the final resultant cc a minute. 
Our fuel pump prime time is how long our fuel pump turns on when we first turn the key on, and typically two seconds is, is pretty usual. Moving on to priming pulse. The priming pulse itself is set under the priming pulse table, which if we bring up, we've got our start injector priming pulse. We also have an option for flex fuel, but bringing up our start injector, we are saying uh, all these different temperatures prime for one millisecond. And of course you would change that based on your particular tune. But what this does is put a, a little spray of fuel into the intake manifold to wet the liners up. And we would either do this at key on, or when we first detect cranking, or we can do it at both. Typically, cranking is the usual one preferred, so that if you're doing lots of key cycles, you're not just spraying fuel into the system for no reason. Staged injection is used for uh, secondary injector sets, for example, on RX-7s and RX-8s, or if you have a larger set of secondary injectors. And on this one, you can say the size of the injector, and also the minimum pulse that those injectors have to be driven for before we start to use them. That's the deep dive on our injection driver. I hope you find it useful. Tune in for more. Cheers.